Hi everybody, the vinyl community, and hi Martin Parrot. My entry to your contest. Um, Martin asked us to show some um, samples, I believe that's the word. Um, I've just watched James Griffiths' uh, entry, which I thought was very interesting, and uh, it kind of gave me a good reminder of the questions. Um, so the first question Martin asks about is uh, a sample, I believe. Um, I'm going to talk about a particular sample that I've always kind of thought of, and I hope this is okay with Martin, because it's basically a, a riff that's used um, through um, the original time and then two further songs. Um, I don't know if it's a direct sort of tape loop or anything like that, but the riff is, is obviously exactly the same thing and it's obviously referenced to where it came from before. So the first riff, the first time this riff was being used was on this album. It's the first Jimi Hendrix uh, I experienced album. Um, and it's a track on here called uh, third stone from the sun, so that's uh, on the, the B side. And it's uh, a riff that crops up in a couple of places. So the first time I heard it, um, this riff, uh, and this is where I learned the, the riff actually, is in a single. I don't happen to have that single with me right now. I've got a copy of it somewhere, back end of nowhere, I don't know where. But it's a single that I had kicking around as a child in my mum's uh, seven inches that she sort of had from the 70s. Um, and it's a single by Cozy Powell. Uh, on a track, as an instrumental track called Dance with the Devil. Really, really good, sort of meaty drumming sound, um, quite rock orientated. But this particular motif or riff, if you want to call it that, uh, is where I first heard this. Now, listen to this. That comes from um, the Jimi Hendrix song. I didn't know that was where it came from um, until just recently. Now that riff turned up in the, the 90s, I believe, um, on this particular record. This is I'm Too Sexy, by Right Said Fred. And when this came out, I remember hearing that, that riff, riff, the motif that I'm talking about. One day I remembered, oh yeah, it's from that old Cozy Powell song. Um, but then looking up to make this video, I realised actually no, it actually comes from the Jimi Hendrix song. At least that's what um, Wikipedia tells me. <laughs> so there's my answer to the riff thing. I hope that was it. Correct. Another question was, I believe. Uh, Martin asked us to show a record um, that suggests where we could get uh, a sample from to perhaps incorporate into music. Now, I'm not going to show a record in this particular occasion because I don't have a record for this particular idea. But I, I do know, and maybe this, maybe I'm sort of um, influenced by James Griffiths' uh, answer to this particular question because he showed that thing with the. The news round uh, music. Now, 
my memory is in the 90s with the whole sort of rave thing that was going on it was quite common that you had these um, rave mixes uh, of, of sort of music from early childhood programs from from us in the UK you know do you remember that like there seemed to be a rave mix of um, the rainbow theme tune or something or something that incorporated And then there was, uh, I'm quite sure there was the magic roundabout um, being incorporated into a rave song too. And I get that. I mean, it's interesting because I imagine the kids that grew up with that in the 70s, um, when they hear it in the in the nineties in rave music, it's going to be sort of nostalgic and trippy and everything like that. I wonder, has anyone ever done that with uh, Mr. Ben? And Mr. Ben was a, a favourite of mine. Um, when I lived in Sweden, my children were very small. Um, we didn't have a television uh, that was connected to um, you know broadcast television. We just had a television and a DVD player. So I used to buy them DVDs of Bagpuss and all the other sort of, you know, the flumps and all sorts of things like that from, from British TV in the 70s, early 80s. And one of the one that I got, and they found this really good, was uh, Mr. Ben as well. There was a bit in that where Mr. Ben goes into the shop and uh, the shopkeeper appears by magic. And he goes, bing! As if by magic the shopkeeper appeared. I wonder if that could be something that could be incorporated into a sort of a, uh, an up-tempo dance mix of something. Just the, the shopkeeper appearing as if by magic. It's my idea. Anyway, I hope that answers your question. So, um, you have a question from Martin Wars, um, a record uh, that we'd scavenged ourselves. Um, I thought this was quite an interesting question. Um, anyone that collects records in the way that I do, you know, um, a majority of our records are scavenged. These mine are, I mean, I just want to turn around and say, take a pick, mate. <laughs> no, of course, I buy one or two new records and, and so on, but uh, a lot of stuff on one side, you know, pinched or purged or, uh, you know, stumbled upon in some way or other. Um, but I'm actually going to hold up this one. Um, this is the Tommy Steel story. It's actually a 10 inch um, record. And it's of a handmade cover. This is the cover as it was when this was released. Um, so I was at a uh, flea market, or what they call um, Cardiff Flea Market, which is a thing, even open on Sundays actually, it's sort of like an antique indoor market type place. And um, I was there a while ago. Um, I don't go there very often because it's right the other side of Cardiff, but on this particular occasion I think my son was at a birthday party or something and uh, I had a couple of hours to kill while, while he was sort of, you know, trampolining with his friends or something. So I, I went to this place and had a look around and I actually picked up two, one, of, one or two, uh, you know, quite interesting little things. Um, and there was one guy that had a pile of um, old records that were quite good and there was one or two there, but nothing spectacular. And then I, I saw this one, and uh, because I'd recently picked up some sort of early uh, 1950s rock and roll records, and made a video about it, I think uh, I'll put a link here to it somewhere. Um, you know, I, I bought home some original Cliff Richard and the Shadows and that sort of stuff. Uh, because I'd sort of been reading up about those records, I happened to read up about this. 
and uh, the guy that was there was almost kind of dismissive of this because, well, you know, he was he was an antique trader, but he didn't know his records, and uh, all the other records were, you know, in sort of fair condition, whereas this was just in this old cardboard handmade cover stuck together with uh, cello tape, and. Uh, I knew for a fact that, well, this is actually probably a bit more collectible than the other ones. Um, I talked him into giving me a good deal on a couple of the other ones. And then I sort of limply sort of said, uh, sort of looked, looked at it and said, sort of looked at him and said, you know, mm, if I want this or not. And he said, I, I, you buy another one, you can have that one for free. <laughs> so I came away with three LPs and, uh, and this one for free. Um, Tommy Steele, I must say, isn't my you know, f favourite star or anything like that, but I was just persuaded by the idea that he was essentially the first um, British Elvis president, at least that's what the media labelled him in, in his day, and uh, this is the record that they were aiming at with that. So, uh, yeah, quite, if you call that a scavenge, just basically what I did, you know, trick this man into thinking I wasn't really interested in it. But, uh, you know, he let me have it for free if I bought another one of his mediocre ones. So there you go, there's a story. a cover for his uh, CD that he's making maybe. Um, so I'm just going to show this. Um, it's a black and white photograph, a famous one from The Cure, standing on a beach, the singles. Um, you can't go wrong with a black and white photograph. Always trendy, always cool, always chic. Um, so there you go. And it's a man standing on the beach. How hard can it be? That's my answer to that question. Thank you, everybody. Um, I hope that was um, interesting and fun. Uh, I certainly enjoyed doing this. Check out my next video. Good luck in the contest. And thanks, Martin, for doing this. Cheers. Bye.